Welcome back to Adventures with Dice. I'm Rob and I'm your host for these videos. And today we're going to be talking again about Old Swords Reign or OSR. Uh, I've got a bunch of these videos on here. There's a playlist. Um, been going through different sections, character creation, spells, equipment, so on and so forth. Um, just kind of breaking the book down, letting you know what's in it. And uh, we're kind of reaching the end of this. We're getting down to the combat treasure, uh, magic items, XP, and um, wilderness exploration, dungeon exploration, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and I originally intended to do individual videos on all that, but when we get down to some of this last stuff, there's, there's not really enough content to do an entire video on each one so what I did was I took kind of the highlights points uh, of anything I thought was really interesting and I'm just putting it all in this video to give you everything you need to know about OSR that's different from other OSR games <clears throat> or possibly even old school D&D if you're playing that so we're gonna be doing that um, there, there's only a few things to really highlight because it is basically just D and D, um, I'm going to delve a little deeper into the wilderness exploration because, like I promised in other videos, talking about provisions and stuff, we're going to talk about that a little more in depth here. But before we get into that, I would like to thank Mike Dimart, who is our hero of the month, and a hero is somebody who has joined the channel. So if you want to join the channel and gain early access to videos and other content and stuff that I put out. There's a link in the description and you can, or you can hit it on the page. There's a join button on the page where you can join Adventures with Dice and be a hero for a dollar a month. You gain access to everything. Um, outside of that, I would appreciate it if you would like, uh, share, subscribe, the whole nine yards. So we're going to jump right into this because after I get done with the the core stuff I want to talk about from the book itself. Uh, the next section in videos that I'm going to be doing with Old Swords Rain is going to be uh, dealing with other products that I use with this, whether it's adventures or <clears throat> uh, random chart books or card decks, uh, just different things that I use with the game and to kind of show you how I play or how I run the game and things you might want to use if you're running this or any other really OSR type game. So we're going to get into that. I'm going to be doing videos on that. I'm going to be doing videos on house rules for it. Um, there are other videos. There's basic fantasy stuff coming. There is Warhammer fantasy roleplay videos coming. Um, I, I, this is my fantasy game if I want a D&D &D type game. But uh, I have definitely found, and I, I got the uh, core rule book for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay recently, and um, I pulled some stuff from it that I used in this. <clears throat> but the more I read it, the more I really fell in love with it, because I love the old world, um, storyline-wise. Age of Sigmar's okay, but it's not old world Warhammer Fantasy. So... Uh, I have delved deeper into that. I've got my hands on the starter box for it, so I'm going to be running that for my group. And um, I'm going to be doing some videos on that and getting into Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay if you're interested in that. <clears throat> and then, of course, we have the Vigilante City that I'm doing videos on. There you go. So on and so forth. So, let's jump into the last few sections I had. Like combat, treasure, magic items, XP... Truth be told, there's not a lot of content to go over in this because most of this is the same across pretty much every version of D&D. Um, your combat, your roll a d20, add or subtract modifier, you're trying to hit a number. If you do, roll for damage. Boom. Um, the only thing I will say about combat that was done in this that I really like is most D&D &D or D&D &D clones that are out there they allow you to add your strength modifier to hit and to damage, but with melee. But with ranged, you add your dex modifier to hit, but not to damage. 
I like adding it to damage, and this game does that. You add your dex modifier to hit and damage with ranged weapons. And I really, really like that. Um, you may not, and that's fine. Again, it's easy to plug and play or unplug if you don't like something like that. <clears throat> but I do like it, and I'm glad that it's in there. Other than that, combat's pretty much the same as it is across D&D. &D. Um, to be honest, treasure and magic items are pretty much your standard fare in this book. Your magic swords and rings and potions and your coinage and, and how you calculate and, and get handed out. Uh, which most most of us DMs are going to do it, you know, our own way anyway. Um, but again, most of that's just standard fare in here, so there's nothing really special to go over. And I'm not knocking it for it because it is what it is. It, it's basic. It's just D and D and basic treasure, basic magic items. I am going to be doing some videos on uh, how I personally have upscaled that <clears throat> a little bit with some other books that I use uh, that my friend O'Neill Flynn from In Light Flynn is his YouTube channel. Uh, I actually got some ideas from books that he showed on there and I picked them up and I was blown away by them. So I've been using those in my games. XP is pretty much the same in here across, you know, like D&D, gain your XP points, hit a certain amount, level up. Um, Damien, who wrote the book, I don't even think he uses that XP system. He talked in one of his videos about using a uh, an XP system where you gain like one XP for every game session you came to, and it was good for drop-in and out players who show up for games. And he used that where I think he explained it like you needed to gain enough XP of like twice... I think it was twice the, the level you're trying to attain. So if you're trying to get to level two, you needed four XP. So you needed to go to four game sessions. <clears throat> um, he talks about that in one of his videos, and I may have that a little bit off because I haven't used that. It's similar to the XP system uh, that Bloat Games uses in their games, and, and I really like that. So... Uh, not a lot to say there on XP, but there is something that I do want to touch on a little bit and talk about how great I think it is in this system. Uh, I talked in my uh, Versus video between OSR and Basic Fantasy how I thought the wilderness exploration was done a lot better uh, in this. And I'm not knocking Basic Fantasy, but I just like the way it's broken down in this. So... We start looking at wilderness exploration on page 111 of the rule book, and it starts out talking about provisions. Uh, provisions, if you watch the other videos, you know provisions is our one catch-all term that covers a lot of things. Food, water, bandages, that kind of stuff. One provision costs a gold, and ten provisions take up one inventory slot. So provisions are important, just like uh, we talked about how they're important after a combat. You use a provision to take a breather. When you're traveling wilderness, like, you know, by the hex, even if you're not using a hex, which hex crawls are really fun, so if you haven't, you should try it out. But even if you're not using that and you're just calculating the days of travel, you can still use this system to um, create events that, and, and keep your players engaged over the days of travel. It's very easy in these types of games um, for a game master, dungeon master, whatever, to get lazy and just kind of gloss over the uh, <clears throat> travel between point A and point B. But like I've talked about in other videos, it's I, I feel like it's short-sighting the game to do that because a system like this really allows you to uh, throw extra little side quest or uh, just just extra fun into the game and let the players do some stuff that they normally wouldn't do. So provisions are important because every day of travel, you eat up two provisions, one for food and one for water. Now again, keep in mind, this is not counting combat. This is just travel. So provisions are important. You can generally just buy provisions in town, but the way travel in an adventure is broken up and we're on we move to page 113 
is that it's broken up by watches. Now there are six four hour watches in a day. And during each watch, you, uh, you, your characters can choose different actions to take. Some actions eat up a whole watch, some actions eat up two watches, and some actions they can just choose to do more than once. Now, generally, you're going to take two of those watches, which would be eight hours, for rest. So you're left with four watches during the day that you can do stuff with. And during each of these watches, you can ask your players, okay, well, what actions do you want to take? Well, these are the different actions they can take. They can investigate. They can travel. Uh, and it, it gives you rules for each one of these, like how long, how, how, how far they can go during a watch, and so on and so forth. Uh, navigating, whoever's leading them. There's even a handy-dandy little chart for uh, roll, them making a roll to see if they get lost and where they might veer off on the hex map. Um, so that can be a lot of fun. Uh, hunting, foraging, fishing, these things come into play in a sense that you have rules for locating the prey, the size of the prey, making the roll for attack, the success and failure and, and what happens. And in that instance, if they succeed on hunting, foraging and fishing, they gain provisions and it tells you how many provisions they get, and then they can split them up with a party. So these are provisions that they don't have to buy, and that's a good thing. It allows them to replenish for provisions uh, without having to spend money. Uh, finding water allows them to uh, repl not have to use a provision for water, so they can cut back on one of the provisions they use per day. Um, then eating, drinking, sleeping, crafting, or repairing items. All of that's in here, and then there's a nice little chart that you can go to that has the terrain, and there's Arctic, coast, desert, forest, grassland, sea, mountain, swamp, swamp, plains, underground, or urban, and then you have the chart goes across, and it tells you, you know, the speed, navigation, water, hunting, foraging, fishing, and whether the, like with speed, it's, the, will the speed be slow, normal, fast? Uh, navigation will be normal, hard, easy. That's the kind of role you have to make to keep from getting lost. And then, you know, water, hunting, foraging, fishing, it gives you the difficulty here for the role, how the, depending on the terrain that they're in, the kind of role that they will have to make in order to succeed and gain provisions from this. I just think that's a really, really good system. Um, of course, you also get to add your proficiency bonus to this role if you are, let's say you're a ranger type character or a barbarian type character who's used to being out in the wilds and you're hunting, uh, trying to take down a ra you know, some rabbits or a deer or something to feed the party, you can add your proficiency bonus to it because you are accustomed to doing these types of things. And remember in this game, your background apply that like it is your skills so anytime that you can apply your background to whatever you're doing and in this case it would be you know hunting that deer then you get to add that proficiency bonus to it so that's pretty cool <clears throat> there's notes on disadvantage or impossible actions and advantage but it's a very very simple system and you might say okay it's it's fun to do once and why would you continue to do it after that? Because it would get kind of stale. Um, not really. You can use this for this opportunity for, well, number one, making it hard for them to find provisions, especially if they're running low. Then it becomes a resource-driven game where they have to find food and water to stay alive. But you can also use these times where they say, okay, well, I'm taking two watches. We're not traveling everybody hanging out at camp, I'm going to go hunt. Okay, well, while this character is off hunting, they can have some type of encounter that, you know, you either planned or did a random encounter or whatever and bring that into the story and boom, you've got a night full of gaming right there just because they went hunting. So there's a lot of opportunity for characters to do things outside of what they would normally do. I cannot tell you how many times in a and d ish game uh, it has come down to, okay, well, you guys are 
uh, ready to you know break for camp. What do you want to do? And it's you know build a fire, eat some food, go to sleep. And nobody puts a whole lot of thought into it. But with a system like this, it allows you to very simply and easily put <clears throat> these different activations or the different actions into their watches. Maybe they got equipment that got damaged and they have to use the craft or repair uh, action during a watch to try to fix something. Maybe the wagon wheel broke on their cart or maybe a shield got damaged and they need to you know, redo the straps on the shield. All of that can play into not only are they doing something and feeling more engaged, but it also leads you to while you're doing this, this other thing happens and you can bring in some other type. It doesn't have to be combat, obviously. It can be, you know, other travelers on the road who give them news about something up ahead of them that they haven't encountered yet. <clears throat> it's just a very well thought out and very simple system to use to, uh, I don't know, extrapolate that kind of uh, adventure role playing from them that is not always combat it, it's them doing other stuff that might lead to combat or adventure or them having to go help a town so on and so forth you get the idea so that's pretty much it that I wanted to touch on from the base rules obviously I'm gonna be coming back and talking about this game quite a bit I love this game um, <clears throat> Damien has the OS Reigns, I think it's osreigns.org. I'll look at the, uh, link. I'll try to put the link for it in the video, but there is a forum now where, uh, there's different sections on there. I've posted videos in one of the sections, but it's, um, it's much smaller, obviously, but the idea is to, to mimic what basic fantasy has done with their forums where there's a lot of community-driven content that gets put out. Uh, I have several monsters that I want to try. He's put the formula up for uh, putting the monster blocks up there. I have uh, several races that I've converted over to uh, OSR, and I'm going to put those in there. Completely unofficial. You know, They're just there for fun for everybody to use. But it's a place where we can add adventures. We can add monsters. We can add NPCs. We can add pretty much anything that we want to do to help build this community <clears throat> for this game whether you're playing this game in total or you're just using parts out of a uh, uh, role for Turaco I know I've watched his videos and he has he's he kind of he loves this and basic fantasy and he's using the backgrounds from this in uh, basic fantasy for characters that he's making over there um, so it, it Go check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description, too. And maybe you'll find stuff that you want to use in your game. There's not a whole lot there right now. They are working uh, on adding stuff. I say they. I am, too. Working on stuff to add to it so that it can be used to propel the game forward. As we're getting ready to uh, see a new edition of this book come out, which does not invalidate the old book. It's going to be the same. It's under a new license, basically, to get out from under the OGL, <clears throat> which most people are wanting to do. So that's all I've really got for this week on this. I hope that you enjoyed this look at the insides of the book, the different sections of the book. And I hope that you come back and check out the other videos I'm going to do on house rules and uh, additional things that you can add. Sorry for the clickety-clack. That's my uh, massive guard chihuahua walking around in here. But uh, anyway, that's all I've got for right now. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, my friends, good gaming.